Hello everyone. Today is day three of my 30-day intensified training for the Spartan Sprint here in Central Texas. And uh, today I just got back from a two-mile run and a five-mile bike, so that went very well. Uh, today I want to talk a little bit about, I think, four topics, four things that are key to being successful at any obstacle race. The first one is, and what I think is the most important, is endurance. A lot of people say speed, but it really is endurance. Whether you get that endurance through running, biking, or swimming, or hiking, or cross-training somehow, endurance is key to any obstacle race because you have to keep going. Uh, and what I think is the most valuable skill is running. Not running necessarily fast, but continuing to run. So what's interesting about is endurance is there's an adage in running that you should either go easy or go hard, but don't go in between. And the reason is that there's this place where your heart rate reaches this certain zone and you're essentially in a black hole. It feels like you're really putting in the effort, but you're not building any endurance. That's why they call it the black hole. You, you burn more calories there. You feel like you're doing a great job getting this exercise in. Uh, but you really have no net gain when it comes to VO2 max, your endurance, and so forth. So uh, the recommendation is to do your long runs at an easy pace and do your recovery runs at an easy pace. And that should be 50 to 75% of your race pace. So, for example, if you run uh, your race pace at a four-minute mile, you would do your easy runs at a six-minute mile. Uh, not that I'm implying that I'm anywhere near that fast. Let's say you run your race pace at a nine-minute mile. You'd run your recovery runs at something like an 11 to 12-minute mile. So fairly slow. Uh, that's especially important for long distance because really you're not trying to build speed with your long runs or your recovery runs. You want to give your body time to recover. You want to build time on your feet so you get your capillaries and your muscles and your joints and everything ready for those longer distances. Uh, so you go easy on those kinds of runs. Or you go hard, which means you, are, you want to be in zone four to five and really doing hard work, either through tempo runs or interval, interval training. Um, a hard, intense run is not generally sustainable. So uh, you want to have a program doing intervals or tempo uh, types of runs. And what that'll do is it'll develop your fast twitch muscles so that you get faster. Uh, your, your long, slow distances will develop your slow twitch muscles and, and as well as your endurance. So uh, endurance is key. So really, if you want to uh, do well at an obstacle race, and not necessarily win it, you want to focus on endurance, which means running at a slow recovery pace, which is 50 to 75% of uh, your race pace. So endurance, very important. Second is agility and balance. Actually, I wouldn't put agility and balance second. I'd put that third. Second, I would put strength. Strength is very important, especially for rope climbs, uh, wall climbs, pulling yourself over things, crawling, uh, and you want to build your arm strength up and you want to build your core strength up. Your core strength will add to your running, of course, um, because it helps you maintain form when you get tired. Uh, but your arm strength is really important, especially for rope climbs and any kind of, any kind of climbing. Um, and so uh, having a program that will focus on biceps, triceps, forearms, shoulders, back, and the core muscles is really important. So third is agility and balance. So uh, agility and balance uh, go hand in hand. Um, ways to work on those, and those are really important for, you know, if you have to walk across the beam or jump from log to log um, or try to balance over a wet log or whatever. So those are really important. It's an important to have that skill. Ways you can improve it. One is just try balancing on one foot at a time. In fact, there was a study that showed that if you would spend five minutes a day balancing on each foot, 
by itself, you could, one, build your balance up, work on your core strength, and you strengthen your ankles, which helps your balance, and it also helps you reduce injuries when you're running. So it's a great way to, um, to build balance. I actually do that whenever I brush my teeth. I have a Sonicare, so I can, uh, I actually do it so that I'm, I switch feet throughout and I have a total of about five minutes per foot. Um, uh, yoga is really good for building balance. Uh, and then of course there's some balancing exercises. You can get a balance beam or just a beam or something that you can stand on and balance on. The Wii has some balancing games on it. Um, uh, but Google balance exercises as well. And then last but not least is speed. If you want to win it, uh, and that would be an elite few who want to win it, um, speed is important. And speed play via tempo runs or intervals is key to building speed. You also have to build up some muscles. Uh, you can build speed riding a bike. Um, and of course we all want to do our runs faster. We want to get faster and faster at obstacle races. Um, I do at least. And uh, This Spartan Sprint I want to do a lot faster than I did last year. I don't think that'll be an issue because last year I injured my uh, heels because I wore Vibrams and uh, basically ended up walking probably the last mile or mile and a half. Uh, so my time was very slow, it was very painful. Uh, I do not, hopefully, do not anticipate that kind of issue uh, this go around. But we all want to get faster. Uh, the key with getting faster is speed, work, intervals and tempo. Uh, but before you do that, it's important to build a good base. Because with speed work, good base and good form, because with speed work, you increase the chances of injury. So you have to be very careful with speed work. Um, along with all of that, and because I think running is key to uh, success in obstacle racing, I'm gonna talk more about running. Uh, my next video, I'm gonna go over 20, the 25 things that I've learned over the last two years that I've been running. Uh, I've only been running two years, uh, but I've learned a lot, because I like to consume information. Um, and I've gone to a bunch of clinics and so forth, and I've looked at a, a lot of different styles of running, uh, like pose and chi running and uh, several others. Um, I want to I want to share the top tips I have for you uh, for running, uh, whether it's an obstacle race or just running in general. Uh, so that's all I'll cover today. I am going to post on my blog, which is www.pardo.com. Three W's. Uh, my workout schedule for the next 30 days. It's, uh, it may change. I'll make a note if it changes. Um, yesterday I did upper body work. I did some dumbbell works for triceps and biceps and shoulders and, and so forth. And I worked on my core as well. Um, so I'll post what those exercises were and how I'm doing them. And uh, if there's any interest, I can probably video some so that you guys can see what's going on. Anyway, I hope your training's going well. Mine's going well so far. I'm looking forward to it. Oh, and as for my running program, I, I'll post that as well, uh, but I'm using Smart Coach. Uh, if you just Google Smart Coach, uh, it's a program offered by Runner's World. You can sign up for a paid version or a free version. I use the free version. I've used the paid as well, uh, but all it really allows you to do is save different plans and edit plans, and you can just recreate a plan whenever you want. And right now my plan is uh, set at a uh, hard uh, half marathon training plan. And the, the reason is uh, half marathon is a great distance for me right now, especially for obstacle racing. Um, and because I chose hard so that it involves speed work because I do want to work on my speed. Um, since I have done a lot of work on my endurance. Anyway, I'll post that as well. Have a great day. Bye.